everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and welcome to another prototyping episode as I try to plan out the colorway I want to knit myself a sweater. It is currently February 2022, and the last time I tried this was back in July of last year. For Dye Pot Weekly 300, I created this awesome glazed colorway using a mixture of Derma Dark Navy and Jacquard Hot Fuchsia. We got a gorgeous navy glaze with a pink underlayer because of the different rates that the colors strike. And then after that, I was like, ooh, maybe I can pump up the volume a little bit. And I tried another version using a little bit more navy and a little bit and a lot more pink on Wool to Dye Force Crazy 8 base. This was Knit Picks Muse. Uh, I dyed a few different bases in this colorway, but this is the one I saved. There were two problems with my recreation attempt. Not only was this color more pink than I wanted, I think I liked this original color better, but this bled and bled and bled to a point where it was really, really frustrating. So I'm sort of back to the drawing board. My plan is to eventually knit the sweater out of Crazy 8 worsted, but I'm still prototyping on the DK because I have a lot of that and I have less of the worsted. So I'll go to the worsted weight yarn once I am happy with the colorway. But we're gonna sort of lean back to the original recipe and see what we can do or at least lean closer to that original recipe. So now I'm gonna go pre-soak 300 grams of Wool to Dye Force Crazy 8 DK. This yarn is 100% superwash merino, and it's this really cool construction of four two plies. So it's an eight ply yarn, really high twist, bouncy, and we know it did glaze really, really beautifully. So the kind of effect will work. We just have to work on the proportions and things like that. So while I go do that, please make sure that you're subscribed, turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. And let me know down in the comments if you want me to revisit this yarn or the washing of this yarn now that it's been dry for months to see if it's still a bleeder and to maybe see if we can figure out some other ways to resolve the bleeding that we saw here. But now let's go measure out some dyes. I put on my deluxe rubber respirator mask with P100 filters, safety glasses, and gloves to start measuring out the dye directly for today's project. I decided to go back to the overall recipe from Dye Pot Weekly 300, but with a little bit of a tweak. I decided to go with Dharma's Fluorescent Fuchsia for our pink today. It is extraordinarily similar, if not nearly exactly the same, as Jacquard's dye, and I happen to have a lot more of it. And so I measured out 0.8 grams of the fluorescent fuchsia acid dye and 0.8 grams of Dharma's Dark Navy, dissolving both really, really well in some hot tap water, not worrying about the volume of water because we're gonna add this directly to the dye pot eventually. If I am happy enough with the results and I want to scale this up to dye that sweater's quantity of yarn, then I will probably make dye stocks and potentially aliquot the dye for all three or four stages of dyeing at the start. So that way I know I have the exact same amount of dye from the same kind of mixtures for each pot. But I'll discuss that more in the conclusions if I'm happy with our yarn. I didn't write this out for the video, but I thought it would be fun to give you a little peek into my diary and see how awful my handwriting <laughs> truly is. I typically only take notes on paper when I am going to be dyeing multiple rounds of something because otherwise I just keep track of the conditions and the amount of dye I use in the description of my videos. So if you ever want to learn more about the proportions of things I'm using, check out the video description because I usually write down the initial acid concentrations and how much dye and everything I use. In my 12 quart dye bath, I have 32 cups of water. And I'm just gonna quickly rinse out these two cups. And we're gonna add all of our dye, which I did end up dissolving in about 400 milliliters of liquid. And I'm gonna quickly rinse out this container just to get that last little residual bit of dye. 
And now I am going to add some acid. And so I am going to use one and a half cups of white vinegar. So that's half a cup. I just opened a new jug, so that's why I'm doing this this way. One full cup. Okay, so it's one and a half cups total. The acid concentration is high to help those navies strike to the yarn really, really fast compared to our fluorescent fuchsia, which will take more time. And so I'm gonna make sure that everything is well stirred up. And then we're gonna take this over to the stove, but we're gonna be adding the yarn to the pot while things are still cool. Even though I'm gonna turn on the heat, it's not gonna warm up in the like two minutes it takes to get ready. And so if things end up being pinker than I want this time, that'll be okay. Uh, if things are too pink, then we can reduce the pink and we can do another round of prototyping. But I figure if I'm gonna spend the hours dyeing the yarn and knitting myself a sweater, I want to get the recipe exactly the way I want it and know what to expect before diving in and not ruining, but getting a yarn that isn't quite what I want. Okay, now I'm gonna add our yarn. Now, could I do our prototyping on mini skeins? Yes, but in addition to everything else, one of the things that I am prototyping here as I try to very gently give it some stirs before stopping, one of the things I'm prototyping is the ratio, the ratio of liquid to yarn, of dye to yarn, of acid to dye to yarn. And so it would be harder for me to prototype all of these conditions, all of these ratios with, with a smaller volume of liquid because we've got enough water here in the pot that the yarn isn't really stuck together. There might be some patches that lay on top of each other, but the yarn is able to float more. The pot is not that crowded. It's almost as full as it possibly could be. And it's gonna take some time to heat up because we've got over 32 cups of liquid in here, at least probably 34, 35, um, once you factor in adding the dye and the vinegar to it. So, yeah, I mean, things are looking really, really pink right now, uh, but I think that that's what I saw the last time as well. It's really hard. Ooh, nope, I'm seeing some purpley. So who knows, if this doesn't work the way I expect, then we'll try again and maybe start with a slightly warmer water. Since it's the winter, my tap water is pretty cold. <laughs> and so, there's probably a balance between having the water be cold so things aren't moving around a lot uh, and letting those colors just slowly come into contact with the yarn so it all strikes at the surface versus having the yarn be so cold that everything is able to mix with the fiber and things won't start striking at all yet. So I gotta trust it. I mean, this is looking, I'll be honest, this is looking a lot like the way things looked in Dye Pot Weekly 347 at the beginning, where I was like, where's my navy? Where is it? And so, yeah, I have no idea if fluorescent fuchsia is more potent than hot fuchsia. These are all questions that I have, but I have the heat on like medium high right now. And so I am just going to leave this be and we'll check back in after 30 minutes or so. Can you tell I'm nervous? It's been over six months since I did the dyeing project last, but more recently, like in the last couple of weeks, I edited it. So I'm like, oh, I'm feeling nervous. Ooh, 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 am I nervous? <laughs> It'll be all right. All right, I don't know. And I'm like, do I move it? Do I not move it? Is it glazed? Can I tell? I don't know if I can tell. We are still not that hot, but I do want to see. I can't even tell how much color is left in there. It is looking glazed though, but I cannot tell the color of the liquid. This is weird. <laughs> okay, I'm risking melting a cup. Okay, it's still very like purpley pink in there. 
and things are definitely looking glazed. It's just sometimes a little hard to tell what's happening. And it's been not quite, but almost 30 minutes and we're just getting steamy. We are not even close to like a simmer or anything yet. But until this moment, I was very good and I did not touch. I maybe like blue like this on the surface a little bit, but that was it. <laughs> and you know, if you've been watching for a long time, I'm, I'll be like, I'm not gonna poke it. I'm not gonna touch it. And then I'm like, and then 30 seconds later, I'm gonna poke it. So we'll continue to leave this on, you know, medium to high heat. And I guess I'll check back in in another 30 minutes or so. It has only been 15 minutes and everything has floated up to the surface. And I'm gonna move the yarn. I mostly now just seen pink in the water. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, but it's bright pink in the water and it's looking nice and glazed to me. This is looking great. Uh, so just a nice little move, but yeah, we're going to continue to let this sit for the 30 minutes to be up. But with everything very much of the surface and more compressed, it needed a stir. <laughs> Those 30 minutes are up and I need to turn the heat down. Oh, we are very, very Steamy, very steamy, but let's see. See all that pink? No, because it's too steamy. Let's give the camera a moment. <laughs> there we go. See all that pink in the water? That we need want to absorb. But the positive is that the yarn looks glazed. I see that shallow layer of navy with the pink beneath. And so I am very, very excited. Now our pot is very, very warm. And it has been warm for a while. And I'm gonna turn it off to let the yarn cool completely in the pot. It's gonna stay warm for hours. So we're gonna get a prolonged period of heat here. What I don't know, and technically this could be an option, if it cooled down a bit, then it could be transferred into like a five gallon bucket or something because having something where you want it to cool completely in the pot is slightly more challenging just overall but this worked i should trust the process and now yeah we'll just let it cool so then we can wash it and cross our fingers that this is the color that i want let's wash our glazed yarn and there is only like the slightest hint of pink left in the pot, but I would say that uh, I'm crossing my fingers. <laughs> I'm crossing my fingers. Color-wise, I mean, it's beautiful. I don't know if it's a little too pink for what I want or if it's gonna feel like a little bit purpley. Uh, so we will have to see, but I can always reduce the amount of pink if I want that to be a little more subtle. Uh, but we absolutely have the glazed effect where you feel like, I mean, it's a little hard once wet, but you have this like light layer of navy over the pink. There is a blush of pink in the water and that is not an amount that would make me worry. So I'm crossing my fingers as we add a squirt of some dish soap. Because the last time I did this, there was a lot of bleeding. So when I did these proportions, but with the jacquard pink, there wasn't. There was maybe only a pink. So, <laughs> we will have to see. But, I mean, this is looking pretty darn good. Pretty darn good. There is maybe the lightest flush of pink, but to me, that is acceptable, uh, especially for like a first rinse. Uh, the, the other one, like a light blush of pink would have been fine, but it wasn't a light blush. It kept being a brighter pink. And so, yeah, I am optimistic, very optimistic, because that is not bad. Um, I'm gonna like kind of remove some of this liquid 
And I'm going to fill up the basin and let the water soak in here for a couple of minutes. And then we'll do a final check. It has been a couple of minutes. And it's not getting any worse. Uh, it's just that little bit of blush. It did not get worse with soap. I'm going to call this a win, honestly. Um, <laughs> I am going to rinse this some more, put it through my spin dryer, and hang it up to dry. Now, I think that if I wanted to avoid some of this, maybe instead of leaving the yarn in the pot until it cools, you could remove it from the pot with some pink left in there. Like, maybe that's something that would help. Uh, I've tried that with blues in the past, and maybe that helps. So maybe it would help with pink, but I don't know. Anyway, let's go take a look at the finished dried yarn and compare it to versions, I guess, and compare it to the last prototype and the original color I attempted. Here is our beautiful glazed yarn. And I don't think I've talked about glazing as a yarn technique yet in this video. A dye glaze is a type of application where you have a very shallow application of color but can still see a lot of what's beneath the surface. Very similar to what you might do with pottery where elements of that clay show through. This is something that really shows up best on yarn with a high twist because there's enough resist in the yarn itself that the dye can't sink through the entire fiber, it's just striking on the surface. And therefore, this looks like we had a pink yarn and we just have this light airbrush of color of the navy on top of it. And it took me a long time to figure out the best way to apply this color, to get good coverage around the whole skein, but also let the dye stay shallow. And surprisingly, starting with a cold bath and not moving the yarn a lot works really, really well because the dye is coming into contact with the yarn a little bit slowly, but when it's getting there because of high acid, it's binding pretty quickly. And yeah, I'm still surprised that this works as well as it does, but it works really well. And uh, I am very, very happy with how this turned out. The effect is a little bit more dramatic on a single ply worsted weight yarn that we have here from Dye Pot Weekly 300. But I also know I don't want to make myself a sweater out of single ply yarn. I made Keith a sweater out of single ply yarn and there are many things that worked really, really well, but single ply yarn just is not as strong. And so for something that may get more use, I want something with more strength to it. And so going with I'll probably use Crazy 8 Worsted for my sweater, but the concept of trying it on the DK base that I use today is very similar. Color-wise, we followed the recipe that I did on this skein, except we used fluorescent fuchsia from Dharma instead of hot fuchsia from Jacquard. And it's pretty close. Some of the differences that I see between the two could be a result of just the yarn base itself and that you know this is a thicker yarn and so more of the navy could get on the surface and so maybe there's a little bit more contrast in areas. Of course if we zoom in we feel that navy and pink contrast. But the one thing that shifting a recipe to another brand does not control for is that we couldn't control for the amount of pigment that is in each of their dyes, because it's not necessarily the same. A 1% depth of shade of one of the colors could have more of the pink dye than the other, which could be why under some circumstances one may, be, may bleed more than the other, and things like that. When I bring in my heavy bleeder skein, the colorway we created today sort of feels a little bit more similar to this, but really because I think it's the same yarn base, and so therefore the glaze and feel is very, very similar. But ultimately, the pink underlayer is similar to what I did the first time. And this, no question, is much warmer. It's less cool toned. I do think that this yarn doesn't feel nearly as cool toned as this one. And so part of me is considering doing another prototype with even less pink. 
But at the same time, I was concerned, even though I love this color, I was concerned that it was a little bit too navy and therefore would blend in with dark wash jeans. And this color would have more contrast. So I'm a little bit indecisive, but we're definitely on the right track and I am liking where we are right now. It is incredibly helpful to look at the yarn twisted up versus laid flat. Because here you can see like the, the step in color difference that we have between those two. I still feel more navy here, but as much as I love that amount of navy, I did want to feel less navy looking at the colorway. I wanted to see more of that pink. And so therefore, I mean, I think that we've got something really, really great here. And... All right, I guess it's about time for me to go forward and think about how I am going to possibly dye enough of this for a sweater. Because since the yarn I'm planning to use for my sweater is a different construction yarn and has different yardage, I therefore just want to have plenty of excess so that way I don't get to a point and realize I need to dye more to finish off the second sleeve or something like that. I figured I'd hop in front of the camera so I could like look at the yarn next to me and like I think that this would be a pretty sweater on me. I think that you would be able to see like some nice subtle details. I think that it has enough interest that it wouldn't be boring to knit with. I really like it and this video and the other one and some others that I'm working on show that when I'm dyeing yarn for myself I can be a little bit more critical when otherwise if I was just dyeing this for a video not because I was intending to make something specific with it I would have said A plus this is amazing let's make more of it send it to everyone it's beautiful but you know I'm like is it the most perfect it can be to make myself a sweater because when you have the ability to create any color you want like literally any color you want you therefore want to try to get it right. And you want to get that color that you want. Whereas if there was a yarn base I really wanted to use from say Knit Picks, and even if they have a hundred colors available, maybe they don't have the perfect shade of blue violet that I want. And I wish that, I oh maybe there's a little bit more pink in that color or a little bit more blue in this one. And well, I'll pick this one because I think that's the best of what's available. But I have more ability to do those little bit of tweaks and to look at something and be like, okay, I want a little bit more blue or I want a little bit less pink and I can make those changes. And really, I have to make a decision and commit. That's what it comes down to. And I think that that's also where you reach a hallmark of a dyer that is maybe not a place where I'm at yet, where you have a vision of what you want in your head and you can nail that versus I find myself a lot of times wanting to play with a technique and play for colors, start to see what they do and then lean into that and lean into the fun and create something that I love. But is that what I love always, what was in my head before I started? No. And honestly, that's a whole huge part of this process that I really, really love and I really enjoy. I love being able to pivot and lean into, okay, this color, maybe isn't the best for sharp speckles, but it's giving a big wash of color. What can we do with that to have a good effect? Or this color doesn't strike fast at all. How can we lean into that and create something really, really, really cool? So my whole point is at some point, I'm gonna need to just say, this is what I wanna go with and go for it and do it. And what I'm probably gonna do is edit this video and let things hibernate a little bit just to see how I'm feeling because I think that the video, what was it, Dipot Weekly 3, 40, I don't know, the one with all the bleeding, that's still very fresh in my mind. And even though this more recent project was really successful and I was excited to do that, I still have some of that frustration in my mind from that other video. So I wanna step away from that a little more. So that way I can, I guess, lean in with a little bit more joy to this project. Choice is the wrong word. So I can lean in with a little bit less self-doubt. 
I did mention earlier in the video how I would go about dyeing a sweater's quantity worth of yarn in a base like this with a technique like this where I can't exactly put all the yarn I need in one five gallon bucket to do it. I need more volume so the yarn can move around to get a nice even-ish tonal glaze onto the yarn. So what I would do is make dye stocks of the fuchsia and of our navy. And then right after making them, I would measure out the dye that I need for each stage. Uh, and so measure out the exact amount of navy and the exact amount of pink that I need and aliquot it. So put those measurements into, for example, mason jars or something to save. That way, if dyeing each one is separated by a little bit of time, I know that I'm using exactly the same proportion of the two colors to one another when I go to dye that batch. And so if the dyes settle a little bit after the stalks are made, that's not gonna affect the color for the next batch because as long as I use everything that's in that mason jar, I'm using the exact same amount of dye. And so that's gonna help me get a closer match. But I suppose, I'm talking about this now, there's gonna be a video where I'm dyeing all this yarn. So please make sure that you're subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel so you don't miss the next chapter of this journey. Oh, Rebecca, overthinking everything over and over because, well, she's nervous to make another sweater for herself and just wants to do it out of her own hand dyed yarn and to not have regrets uh, during the knitting process. But I think we'll do it. I think we'll get there. Okay, I'm gonna admit something here. A little bit of me, just a little bit, is thinking, well, if this is a little bit too pink, maybe I should use purple pop instead of hot fuchsia. I'm considering it. I'll be honest, I'm considering it. Uh, <laughs> maybe if I do a test, I should do a test on a single skein versus a batch of three. Uh, maybe that would make more sense. But uh, yeah, I am considering it. So let me know what you think. If I should just go for it or, I mean, maybe I should just try it with purple pop anyway, even if I stick with that recipe. I mean, trying this with purple pop and trying this with purple pop, also even trying it with fluorescent safety orange or radioactive would also be really, really cool. So maybe I just need to do that and then, you know, because if I'm doing that, then I can just decide if I want to swap for the sweater. So I have a feeling that that's the video I'm going to do next. Not as part of this dying to knit a sweater mini journey spread out likely over years, but just because I think it would be fun to see how navy pops with all those colors, just like I've done twisted skeins with some of those colors and black to see how they spread and how that looks. That's something I've played with in the past, but anyway. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.